Hey ladies and gents, welcome back. This is going to be part one to what if Naruto was the reincarnation of Law from One Piece. Now, more specifically of what this is going to be is that slowly over time, over like certain scenarios and situation, Naruto was going to regain the memories of Law, who ended up dying in the One Piece universe in their fight against Kaido, which I don't know if he's actually going to die or not, but I'm just going to be like, yep, yeah, that's how he died, because why not? And obviously speaking, if he's the reincarnation of him, he's going to have Law's powers, or the Ape Ape for them, for fairly positive is what it's called, but whatever. We'll get into that later. So, as time passes by, as Naruto is growing up, things go normally at first. Naruto is still born, has a absurdly high level of chakra, and so gets half the nine tails sealed within him, with the other half being sealed within his father, Minato. With this actually happening, Naruto's life growing up is actually, you know, fairly similar. But one major difference is actually going to be when the actual villagers bully Naruto, when they pick on him, kick him around, and, you know, just do all those rather heinous things to do to a little kid. This spikes a memory inside of Law, or Naruto in this whatever, whatever we're going to be calling him. And as this memory, you know, goes back to Naruto, this is obviously a memory of Law, with his pretty fucking shitty childhood and exactly what happened. Like, as we saw with flashbacks from him, he wasn't exactly the most happy child in the world, and he had some diseases and things like that. So this memory kind of like floods back into Naruto now, as he remembers this pain. But it also comes with something else. Some power. As Naruto is getting beaten up by all of the fucking, you know, villagers all at once, suddenly a blue orb completely surrounds all of them, extending around 10 feet from all directions of Naruto in a circular pattern. As this happens, Naruto pushes with his hand, and one of them gets completely split in half, but they look down screaming that this got cut in half, but they don't actually feel any pain. They don't know what's happening, they're really confused. As this happens, Naruto turns away, kind of, you know, a little bit scared of himself as he deactivates the room and runs away. But this does not fix the person. He's still cut in half. He does not feel pain and he's not going to die from it. But that was not exactly something you'd expect. He just got cut in half. What was that ability that he just used? As this happens, Naruto continues growing up. He begins training with his ability, and begins to learn how to use that ability, which Naruto eventually comes to call Room. And then, the ability that cuts things, or like separates objects, Naruto ends up calling Amputate. For some reason, this ability's name just kind of popped into Naruto's head, he doesn't really know why. This is obviously because this is kind of the manifestation of a devil fruit power, and for some reason, when people consume devil fruits, they always kind of have this like name of what the devil fruit is, and they get these names of things, and since the Ape Ape no Mi, also known as the Operation Operation Fruit, is based on, you know, kind of things like medical knowledge and things like that, it kind of puts this name into Naruto's head, because, you know, it's kind of meant to be more of a doctor than anything else. So Naruto continues growing up like this, and people obviously are just absolutely absurdly scared of him because they don't know what that thing that Naruto did was so they don't really confront Naruto about it anymore. Years later Naruto ends up joining the academy where because of his somewhat you know resurrected mind of law he actually easily passes every single thing except or, you know, in terms of, like, mind, except for he can't make a clone still because of the fact that, again, Naruto still has an absolute fuck ton of yang chakra, but doesn't really have any yin, which is what is used for the normal clone. This still ends up leading to Naruto getting, you know, kind of, like, tricked, and he ends up getting, or taking, stealing the scroll of sealing. And this time, 
Naruto actually gets an idea because of his increased intelligence. He learns a little bit quicker on that he wasn't actually supposed to do that, and so he ends up learning the Shadow Clone Jutsu just like he would normally. But something else he does is create a copy of the scroll, so Naruto can actually study it later because he knows that these he read some of the abilities and the descriptions inside of it after he mastered the Shadow Clone Jutsu in mere minutes, and he knew that some of these abilities could come in handy later on, especially in combination with his room and amputate abilities. One of these such would actually be the Flying Raijin Jutsu, which Naruto doesn't really know how he plans on learning because it didn't really give a specific detailed thing of how to actually learn it, but Naruto considers all of the possibilities. Imagine being able to teleport somewhere and, or I mean, he technically can kind of do that with room, but he doesn't actually know that yet, but whatever. And then being able to create a room wherever he was at like various locations because, you know, things like that. And also, with the use of shadow clones, they'd probably be able to make multiple rooms, and Naruto contemplates this and tests it, and it does in fact work. So Naruto continues moving on through his training, and obviously he absolutely dominated Mizuku in their fight, and you know, kind of things like that. That that happened normally, and Naruto graduates from the academy because he shows them that he mastered a jutsu from the scroll. So with that actually happening, Naruto graduates and still gets placed on Team Seven because of the fact that he did just barely class pass because of that act of not being able to make the clone at first. So with that happening, Sakura and Sasuke are still on Naruto's team, just because, you know, I really don't want to change it up all too much because, you know, make the story a little bit simpler to make in all, re in all reality. So, this happening, they all introduce themselves on the rooftop. Sakura's is still exactly the same. She doesn't have such a deep-seated hate for Naruto in this what-if because Naruto isn't such an annoying little brat and most of the kids don't actually, you know, they don't really fear Naruto yet because they were, like, they don't, they weren't told by their parents that Naruto is this monster because they were kind of forbidden to. So they don't really, she doesn't despise Naruto. She just doesn't, you know, like him. So Sasuke is also the same. I don't, nothing, none of this would have change the Uchiha massacre in any way, and Naruto didn't really try to get closer to Sasuke because he was more focused on his own training, which made him obviously a lot stronger than he was in the original. So next is Naruto, and with Naruto actually obviously having some of Law's memories and you know his personality kind of mixed with Law's, his goals would actually change a little bit. Naruto still has ambitions, he still has plans and everything like that, but because of the fact that Law is in him, Law's kind of thing was that he wanted to take down Kaido, which I don't necessarily know the exact reason why he wanted to do it. You'd think if he wanted to take anybody down, it would be Doflamingo because of what he did to him as a child and what he did to Corazon, I think his name is, and things like that. But he you know, that wasn't their original goal. So I'm not exactly sure what the mindset of Law would be, but let's just say it negates Naruto's ambitions just a little bit. He doesn't necessarily want to be the Hokage anymore, he just wants to be respected and he wants to be powerful. So that is exactly what Naruto says. Next, Kakashi tells him not to eat any breakfast and to meet him in the morning. Naruto listens to this, I don't really see why you know, Naruto or Law wouldn't, you know, listen to Kakashi. So they show up the next morning for the bell test, where he explains the premise of it and shows them that there are only two bells, meaning only two of them can pass. He then starts the bell test and everybody, including Naruto, goes and hides in the bushes, trying to hide, move, maneuver around Kakashi and finding an opening in his, you know, obviously, you know, distract- like, he's distracted as fuck. He's literally reading a porno at the exact same time as he's doing this. So. Naruto takes this as a taunt, and he uses he opens the room, and it is just big enough so that it barely encroaches in the area where he can actually like you know get to where Kakashi is. So with Kakashi having obviously things like grass, rocks, everything like that around him, Naruto would have things to switch with, which is one of the things he learned during his years of training and things like that. So switching it with one of the objects that there is, Naruto appears directly in front of Kakashi, ready for a strike with his two-handed sword, which he picked up obviously because, you know, laws in him too. So he picked up a two-handed sword obviously. So he swings up at Kakashi because he was ducking down, and Kakashi manages to jump back out of the way. 
Naruto's room would then expand as it once again encroaches on Kakashi, and he realizes that as long as he is within this barrier, this boundary, it seems he can do these weird abilities that he doesn't exactly know what they are. So he once again tries jumping out, but this time Naruto switches something else. Instead of switching, you know, whatever he, you know, felt like it, he switches Kakashi into the middle of the room. He looks around and he realizes what happened. It isn't just himself that he can switch with. He can switch other people, all kinds of objects, including living ones. And he's really, this is concerning. He doesn't know how it's happening, nor does he know how it works, but he's a little concerned now that this is, you know, the actual outcome of this fight. So with this actually happening, Naruto once again runs forward towards Kakashi. This time, using his amputate ability to cut Kakashi clean in half. Kakashi is immensely surprised by this, and he wasn't actually expecting a strike from, you know, an actual distance away to actually hit him, let alone cut him clean in half and leave him in no pain. He's really confused and he's on the ground now, but now he uses, you know, the substitution jutsu and he just kind of yeets himself out of the way faster than Naruto can actually see, because that's how the substitution jutsu works. It's making a smoke cloud and then, you know, using your body flicker to actually run away. Kakashi grabbed the lower half of his body and he tries to reattach it, but it doesn't really seem to be working. He's once again outside of the room, and Naruto doesn't really know where he is anymore, but Kagashi again is completely split in half, so what's he gonna do? Now, Naruto goes to his other two teammates, figuring out where their locations were, and tells them that they should probably use teamwork so that they can actually find him. So, although reluctantly, Sasuke ends up agreeing, and because of the fact that Sasuke agreed, Sakura would obviously agree as well. So they both head off, and they all look for Kakashi. Naruto, using his room, can actually pretty easily find him using his shambles ability, I believe is what it's called when he switches places with, or when he can switch to objects places. Kakashi kind of just appears in front of them, and Sasuke holds down his lower body while Sakura holds down his upper body, while Naruto picks up the bells. He decides that he's you know, he, he's whatever, he doesn't really have the massive ambition of increasing through the ranks, his only ambition was getting strong. It doesn't really matter if he's a, you know, actual ninja to do that, so whatever, who the fuck cares. Giving one to Sakura and one to Sasuke before turning around to walk away. I'll do this on my own, he says. However, Kakashi once again reattached, because, you know, Naruto let him, or kind of like reattached him, stands up, appearing in front of Naruto, saying, you pass and Naruto's like oh um, i i guess that's chill then so that's where i'm gonna leave this part off i'll see you guys in the next part adios peace out